Hey everybody, this is Colleen with Artwork by Colleen. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make an easy cabbage rose. I found a great tutorial by Susan with Turtle Soup Beads. She does an amazing job and I just thought I would do my take on, it's pretty much her take, but I just thought maybe not everybody's seen her, so you can see mine. But I will give props to her, she did a great job. I got a little ahead of myself and I had started putting the clay together, realizing that I hadn't actually started the video. So there's that. Anyway, I've got the dark blue here. I've got a turquoise here and I've got a white here. I'm going to make a simple Skinner blend with them. I really love these colors, but as always, you're welcome to use any colors that you like, anything that you think would make a great combo. You can even have um, a couple of different colors that will blend together, but are completely different. Like, um, I don't know, like a a yellow and a purple or something like that. Anyway, so I'm going to take them. I put made the Skinner blend. If you need to see how to do that, I have a, a video on that if you look on my page. And I'm going to run this through the pasta machine quite a few times, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like before I thin it out. Okay, I'm back. This is what the blend looks like. What I'm going to do is fold it this way so I have a long one where the colors go light to dark and then I'm going to put it through the pasta machine I'm going to put it through a couple of times and then I'm going to go to like maybe a seven or something pretty thin not the thinnest one because this is pretty pliable clay and I don't want it to break on me so let me straighten it out lengthen it and I'll show you what it looks like so you're going to want to make a bullseye cane you can either start with the dark or the light in the middle it works either way. So just to give you an idea, I made this one starting with the dark in the middle, and then I made this one starting with the light in the middle. Unfortunately, neither of these two had as much contrast as I wanted, so it only shows like it's two colors, even though it was more than that. Anyway, um, for the sake of this one, I'm going to put the light color first, and then I'm going to roll it all the way up, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're rolled. So I'm back. That's what the bullseye cane looks like. But before I start reducing it down, I'm gonna come mix these, this blue with some of this black to just make it a really deep dark blue and wrap it around the cane. And what I'm gonna wanna do is put it maybe at a two or something like that. Not the thickest one, but maybe like one smaller. Because if you go too thin, once you reduce it all the way down, you pretty much lose the effect of it all together. So I'm going to go mix this up, roll it out thinner, or roll it out to where it's supposed to be, and then show you how I wrap this. I'm going to mention this real quick. I'm a big fan of glitter, so I am going to add in a little glitter to it also to give it a, just a little more sparkle. Okay, that definitely took a few minutes longer than I expected. Took a little more clay than I expected, but hey, that's what this game's all about. I'm not a big measurer. I'm just a take it as we go kind of person. All right, so I just cut that one off evenly. I'm going to start here and I'm going to start wrapping it. It's just going to give us a little bit more of a contrast. Oh good, I had a little bit extra left. Perfect. And if you can see, it wraps over a little bit more. So I don't like those big ones. So I'm going to come here and use the correct blade side. Just angle it off this way. Hmm. See, that's perfect to show you. So I didn't go quite long enough, but hey, guess what? Look, with a little squeezing and pinching and slight bit of rolling, bam, it all works. So now I'm just gonna come here and I'm gonna, gonna trim off this extra part here because it's really unnecessary. The next step is going to be to reduce this into a length where I can chop it into three pieces. So you know how to roll it, it's easiest to do these. The bullseyes are one of the easiest ones to reduce because you can literally just roll it out. I do, however, periodically smush it down, official term, so that it doesn't get too distorted. And then I keep rolling. So I'm going to come back when it's a little bit longer and we can chop it in three pieces and go to the next part. Okay, I'm back. So I've got it rolled out. Um, 
I'm gonna make each one two inches long. So I've got six inches here. I'm gonna cut off these ends so we have nice, pretty pieces. Be better if I use the hard blade part instead of trying to cut my finger, but you know, it's whatever. I always save my pieces for later because I usually end up chopping them up and uh, making something that looks like this when I'm finished with my leftovers because those are really good for so many different things. But we're going to take it and make two cuts. Okay. It's pretty, right? I mean, I think it's pretty. But that the next thing we're going to do is cut these. These are ultimately going to become the areas for your petals. We're going to keep one the full length because that's going to become the center of the rose. And then the rest of these, we're going to chop into fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and chop all these into fourths. But what I want to show you here is what you do once they're all chopped up. We're going to flatten these out because these are what we're going to put together to literally make the rose come alive. And when you get to the end, can just squeeze it out a little bit. You don't want it completely flat. There you go. So something like that. And then the center one, you're going to want to, I, I usually take one side and I really flatten it out a little bit more on that side because you're going to make that first curl in to the center of the rose and you want to have a good tight curl. So I'm going to flatten all these out because this is, like I said, it's going to be the centerpiece. You want to try to keep them all pretty close to the same size. It's going to end up they're not going to be perfect because more likely than not, some of these pieces that you have cut into quarters, one side will be a little bit bigger than the other. So I'm going to finish cutting these in quarters and then I'm going to come back and we're going to actually build the rows. All right, here I am back again. Now we've got all our pieces flattened out. As I said, we made this one uh, a little extra flat on this side. So we're going to start coming here and just start turning it. Keep turning it. Just keep rolling it in on itself until it gets to the end and the theory being now you've got the center of your rose. I think this side looks better so we're going to use this as the front. Now this is what you're going to start doing. Where each of these seams are you're going to put one of these. So you're going to place it over the seam. As you start getting more and more seams clearly you're not going to be able to cover every seam. So you just want to make it look Kind of like you're building a rose. So right now I've got these two and I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to squeeze it out. Also because my clay is really pliable, I'm able to kind of stretch it a tiny bit so I can make it go all the way from each end so that I get a full size cane. Now I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to push it on this seam. And then I'm going to take, this has got two seams here, but I can pretty much cover that with this one piece. So now I'm going to cover two seams with one. There's no right or wrong way. Honestly, you just have to keep looking at the rows, kind of make it look not too distorted. You don't want all your petals on one side and then your center way over to the side. It's really kind of just as basic as that. Um, I got another one with two sides here, so I'm going to come here and also push this out. I'm going to stretch this just a little bit, see if I can get it to the end. It looks like it did. Starting to look like a rose, yeah? All right. I've got another seam here. I'm just going to try to do this quickly for y'all so you get an idea of what it looks like. And it's super easy to do. Uh, like I said, you can mix any colors that you want. You can combine two different colors you think may or may not go together. Um, if you want to do that, I would recommend testing a little piece of it first. So just to give you a little bit of, um, I don't know, experience advice, I guess you would say. As far as 
when I started making canes, my absolute go-to was uh, Sculpey Primo Clay. I thought it was the best, at least for me it was, to make a really nice cane. Now I've only got two pieces left, so I feel like I'm gonna put one here and then maybe one here and then, then that's it and we'll call it quits. I'll slice it down the middle and show you. But what I wanted to tell you is what, what I found out because of the clay shortage of 2021, um, I've had to use a whole lot of Sculpey 3. Sculpey 3 is considerably uh, softer than the Primo, but the trick is, finding out the hard way, is whatever clay that you use will probably work out fine, but just make sure whatever clay you use, you're consistent and use that clay for the whole cane or else you'll have the it won't reduce evenly and you'll lose a bunch of the soft clay and the hard cane will be the ones that stick out the hard clay. All right, so this is it. We're done. Um, I've got them all on there. I'm not gonna chop it right in the middle because I kinda wanna do a little bit with it. So cut it down the middle and there you go. There's your cabbage, cabbage rose. Um, the other thing you can do is you can, um, just to give it a little more definition, you can also come here and, you know, kind of push in where those seams are. And that way it gives your rose a little more definition. Generally speaking. And here we are, this is the finished rose. I think it came out really nice. Thank you guys for joining me. And don't forget, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.